BroadcastMedia.com Chicago. And around the world where your voice is heard. This is UBM Talk. The following show is paid programming and does not necessarily express the views and opinions of Urban Broadcast Media and its subsidiaries. Thank you for listening to UBM Talk. Welcome back to the Let's Stay Together talk show. Now here is your host, Reverend Rick McCain and author Brenda McCain. All right, all right. Welcome back to the Let's Stay Together talk show. Your host, Rick McCain, with Brenda McCain and Tracy Brown Howard. I'm not the baby boo down. Uh, you, you just the person that's cutting me off and, and is going to be fired at that. Wow. You fired me you know, times. I'm, you know, one of the things that it drives me nuts. Hey, f- let me go back to the guests because you, yes. you, know, you messed me up. Thank you, Dion. <laughs> Uh, you know, thank you very much for guests for listening to our show. Uh, we've got an open position for uh, Brenda's mm. position. So when you're available, when, once you go audition for the room, the Let's Stay Together talk show <laughs> will be sitting there for a new uh, guest host. Mm. Uh, but while she's here, uh, I'm going to let you introduce uh, the guests and see if you can keep your job. Okay. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> you ready for me to do my part? I'm going to let you do your part so you can keep your job. Okay. Do your thing, With my girl. temporary position. Uh-huh. Welcome back, everyone, for being <laughs> on, staying with us on the McCain train, listening to my husband make funny jokes right there. Anyway, for making marriage I'm work. Yes, he is. On making marriage work, we have the dynamic dual couple, Ted and Renna Williams. I believe they've been married for 23 years this year. Yes. yes. Speaking to that mic and say it proud. They said yes. They said together. Yes. 23 23 years, and I love it. So we, you know, I didn't give you questions this time. We're going to be candid and raw and have fun with you. Because this is making marriage work. So do you want to do the lead-off question, or would you like me to do it? I'll start off with it. You know, because one of the things we wanted to do is because so many couples are divorcing at an alarming rate, but we've got a lot of couples that people are not talking about that are making it 20 30, some 40 years, and we wanted to kind of talk about helping people understand that you can make marriage last last for a lifetime. And so we brought in a couple that we know that love each other. We know they're a Christian couple. Uh, They're teachers for marriage. Uh, They've helped out a lot of different couples, and they understand what it means to be, you know, to be in a relationship, to be married for life. And so we wanted to bring in Ted and Renna to talk about that. And so Tell me a little bit about your thought process of being married for your your entire life. What is your thought process on that? Woo! <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Woo! She gonna be speaking a, to that mic. She baby. gonna be screaming with that uh, with that uh, nude suit too. I see. <laughs> baby, you go first, baby. Oh wow! Uh, married for life. Well, Rick, I, I have to be honest with you. When, when we first got together, we never thought about being married for life, right? You know, we always look at the physical appearance, and you know, uh-huh. looking at my beautiful wife, how attractive <laughs> I was to her. Uh. <laughs> um, but one thing God taught me was, was that you have to love your wife, or our, our, our church have taught us, you have to love your wife as Christ loved the church. And... Uh, most of the time, we don't know what love is. Mm-hmm. But when you really love someone, how can you think about being apart? You know? Aww. That's real love right yeah. there. Okay, Rena, what you got? After she over there crying for a second. A team! A team! A team! A team! They're trying to break you down. They're trying to break you down. It's going to be good tonight. They're trying to break you down. Oh, yeah! It's going to be good tonight. It's going to be good tonight. It's going to be good. Hey, that's what you call smooth operator. Like, hey, marriage for life, baby. Remember that? Okay, let's go. Let's go. I might have to lay some hands on them. I might have to lay some hands on them. He's married now. Okay. You know, to be honest, um, Marriage is not for punks. Ooh. Marriage is not for punks. Mm-hmm. When you say you do, you have to mean that thing. Yeah. Um, there are going to be some good days, and mm-hmm. there's going to be some bad days. Yeah. It's a matter of bringing God in it first. Yeah. And baby, I said, get you some, get you some pets for your <laughs> knees. <laughs> you gonna need them. 
it, and it, she's it, talking about prayer for those unsaved right. people. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. For those oh, unsaved oh, people. Oh, right. <laughs> Jesus, I'm sorry. He shut the hay. He's hey. talking about okay, saved yeah, people. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> you know, getting you on your right knees because you got to do a lot of you prayer. Some praying. A lot of prayer. Because I, 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 I can see those, prayer. those praying mamas <laughs> saying, she better be talking about prayer. I'm talking about prayer. Because I'm, I'm coming to get my baby. Thanks for clearing that. Okay, <laughs> yeah. What you got, baby? Um, I'm just in awe of the knee pads. I'm like, oh. No, in all honesty, here, this is a great covenant marriage, such like ourselves. Yeah. They yes. put God ahead of their marriage as the umbrella. And yes. then I'm, I know you, as a beautiful woman, Renna, you respect your husband to be the person in charge, the leader. And then comes Renna and the children. That's a lot right. of people don't get that concept is not saved. Can you explain to them why is that order that we're doing that? You know what? Everything is in order. Um, I think Ted was reading me something earlier today talking about marriage and how it's supposed to line up. Mm -hmm. And we try to live that. Not saying that it's easy. You have to try to live it. Otherwise, Mm -hmm. it won't work. It won't. It won't work. You need to do everything in a divine order. And marriage is by design, and it's designed by God. It is. And uh, when people step out of that line of marriage, and you know what, I'm like you were saying, I'm one that don't believe in same sex marriage. But oh my God, no. That's uh-uh. for those people, but for me in our house, I, I'd rather be with a, a hard leg. <laughs> oh, tell me about it now. You know, as beautiful as you and Tracy, I can tell you that all day, I don't want you. you know, it's just simple Amen. Amen. <laughs> and I agree with that. I'm going to go back to when Ted and I first got married. Yeah, we knew a little bit about God, but we God wasn't the center of our marriage. Yeah. So everything was just totally off-center. Mm-hmm. Everything was just totally off. We were arguing about petty stuff. Oh, you know, okay. um, the money just couldn't stay in the house. Okay. Everybody <laughs> doing their own thing. Mm-hmm. I was like, wait a minute, wait a minute. Something has got to change here. And when um, we got more into Christ to see what marriage was supposed to be like mm-hmm. and learn how to walk that walk, then mm. things changed for us. It wasn't always easy. He tried uh-huh. to take the mic. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. I haven't dropped it yet. But okay. <laughs> I agree with you, Rena. We had to let Christ get into us uh-huh. so we would know how to treat one another. Because if we don't love Christ, how can I love her? Right? That's a great point. If, if I can't love, how can I, for, how can I be forgiven if I don't know what forgiveness is all about? Uh-huh. And I, I, I truly believe uh, when marriages fail most of the time, it's because that Christ is not in the center. And they don't have a, a Christian couple that they could go to and have good conversation with. Yeah. You know, and I always speak about it when I was teaching classes, too, and we'll talk about mm-hmm. uh, you guys and where you're teaching at, is that I would always say that, uh, someone has to be able, be willing to die on the cross for their marriage, uh-huh. for their marriage to survive. It's like you've got to kill your own desires and realize that that covenant marriage is more important than your temporary wants and needs or desires or feelings at that matter. Yes. You're going to get angry. You're yeah. going to have oh, arguments. Yeah. Oh, You're yeah. going to have fights. We've been married for 22 years. She still ain't learned how to stop fighting with me yet. You know, nope. <laughs> I'm going to fight I, you I don't, too. I don't, I don't do no fighting, but she always be doing fighting. And you know that's lying too. But, right. uh, you know, we, we are going to have arguments. But when you know that that covenant, yeah. that you're in that relationship with God first and then your marriage, and that you are doing what you're supposed to do as a man in that marriage right. and a woman in a marriage because it's to please God, you'll realize that if I'm going to please God, I'm going to please my wife. Yes. Uh-huh. If I'm going to please God, I'm going to please my husband. I'm not interested in getting something because I, I'm giving something. Yeah. I'm going to give what God requires for me to give, and therefore I know if I give what God requires me to give, he's going to make sure my wife gives what she's required to give. Right. We look at it right. that way, your life, your marriage can be everlasting. Mm-hmm. Now, saying that, you guys are teaching at what's called the greatest church in the world, Salem Baptist <laughs> Church, you all have been teaching there. Talk about some of the things that you, you all do when you're talking to people about marriage uh, at the Salem Baptist Church. Well, first of all, Salem Baptist Church is the greatest church in the world. I just got to, I just got to throw that out there. That's all right. That's, you should feel that way. Uh, I mean, we had some great, first of all, we had some great teachers and ministers there, yourself, uh, Reverend Rick, and Miss Brenda you. McKay. 
Thomas and Patrice Henderson, yes. Greg and Lavetta Terry, mm-hmm. and Pastor mm-hmm. Meeks and Mrs. Meeks. Uh, basically, the what they have taught us throughout the years is that uh, we must, first of all, love Christ. Yes. Uh-huh. We must love Christ first. We must have a personal relationship with Christ first before we can even think about loving someone else. And uh, with the biblical principles and uh, the on-hand training, uh, we just try to be real with mm-hmm. the couples. You know, we just try to give them real examples. You know, we're not some uh, some fake marriage here. We do have Amen. problems, mm-hmm. you know. So we, we just try to be real. We just try to give them some real-life experience, some of the things that we went through, uh, some of the things that was taught to us, and, uh, you know, and just try to help them apply it to what they what they're going through. Yeah. I like the key thing he said, be real about it. Cause uh, most people back in the day, in the beginning of our marriage, and if we ever wanted to go to counseling or look at other couples, I used to hate mm-hmm. hearing couples. Oh, we don't argue. And when you say stuff like that, that means someone's controlling the other person in the relationship. Yeah. And I, it just always turned me off because it's like, well, I'm not saying I want a couple to battle, but it's like, give me some real life circumstances, right. some issues. How did you, you know, resolve problems? Because you ain't going to always agree. No, you're not going to always <laughs> agree. And then I hate for people to do that. It's exactly what you're talking about. Oh, our marriage is wonderful. Oh, our th- Everybody have a wonderful marriage, but uh-huh. everybody has some issues because you're yes. trying to bring two people together with two different ideas and mm-hmm. two different opinions. Mm-hmm. Now, you're going to have to learn how to compromise. You're going to have to learn how to see it the other person way. And something Rick had touched on, just to piggyback off of that, you have to get up every morning and die to yourself. Yeah. Yep. Do you understand? That's deep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And once I understood that because I was a little tough, a little thing, talking about, uh, uh, uh. <laughs> Hold on, brother. Wiggs. Yeah. Hold okay. on. Hey, he, 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 about, he about to get his knee pads now. Okay, okay. Ooh, yes, she was. And Jesus, he shot. Okay. Thank okay. you, God. You know, we're shot up in here. But, you know, when you raise a certain way. Yeah. You know what I'm backgrounds. saying? Different backgrounds. You're a strong black woman. And you talking about submissive. Boy, I can understand. I'm like, how you spell that? Okay. What that look like? What that mean? <laughs> you know, yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. What that Follow what? Lead mm-hmm. me where? Right. <laughs> I had that thing twisted for years. Yeah. And I'm I'm married into being a reverend wife. And I admit, I'm like, I'm not submitting to him. Show me in the Bible. Of course, it Wait go right here. Wait a minute, she took a black mark and marked it out. It ain't in there. <laughs> I don't see that in the Bible. It ain't that. in there. That's a, that's, a, that's a New Testament. You didn't scratch it out. New Testament, King James, <laughs> International. She scratched it out in every Bible she could find. Stop it. Oh, my right. God. Stop yes. It. Okay. <laughs> but, you know, the funny thing about it is that, you know, those real-life stories, people need to hear that. Yeah. You know? Okay. And, and, you yes. know, and, and women need to hear that, yeah, it's not the easiest thing to be submissive, you know, especially if that, you know, the world today – you know, tells you to be, you know, so independent and not being submissive. But to be submissive in a relationship means that that man is also submitting to God. Yes. Absolutely. You know, and if that man is submitting to God, then submission does not become that difficult. Mm. Right. Now, men, you need to know that you need to submit to God and give your wife, love your wife like God loved the church. Right. If you're doing that, then it does, you know, it's not that hard. Now, you know, when Brenda was married to me, it, it was, you know, difficult for her. When? You know, when ah. Brenda, I'm getting on my knees now. Uh, after, when Brenda first got married to me, it was very difficult. Uh, Tracy ain't even on the mic and you holler. Uh, it was very difficult, you know, for submission because, you know, she was like, you know, you, Brenda. She, you know, she was strong will. Still is now. That's why we call her Betty Shabazz on, uh-huh. on the thing, you know, because she got that, you know, that I'm going to say what I want to say kind of stuff. Yeah, I do. Uh, but, you know. <laughs> As we grow together, and that's one of the things that, that makes uh, relationships forever. We did not, we didn't like the things that we did, but it didn't destroy the love that we had for each other. Mm-hmm. Right. And when you can look at that, your lo- our love has gotten more stronger through our trials and tribulations Absolutely. and our ups and downs Absolutely. than it ever would have been if we would have just trying to be some perfect couple, which we right. never wanted to be. Mm-hmm. No, it's, it's not how you start; it's how you finish. Yeah. You just said that? So who, baby? Who you talking, who you to, talking over to? There? <laughs> I don't know who you talking to. You trying to talk who you to yourself? Talking to over there? She way over there. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, oh, okay. You All sure right. did, just say. <laughs> you know, it's not. Well, we didn't hear that part. So. Right, right. Did right. she have an inspirational <laughs> corner? What were you talking about? No, but that, you know, it's very important that people understand that. And I give kudos to Salem Baptist Church because it is a great uh, place where marriage ministry 
is really, you know, something that's very important. They yes. do premarital. Uh-huh. They yeah. talk to people and they, they let people know, hey, are you ready to get married? Right. You know, is this right. something you really want to do? Because, you know, like you said, marriage ain't for punks. You need to know that you're about to step into something that's going to take Every ounce of your faith, every ounce of the person you are, uh, because being married to a Brenda, being married to, to a, a Rick, Rick. Okay. I was going to say that, honey. Okay. I'm going to say you first because you'll be more challenging than I am. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, Rick. You might need somewhere to stay. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Just for the night. Take Just for the night. I already, got, I already got my hotel reservations as we speak because mm. she took the keys from me. Mm. But mm-hmm. dealing with someone like that, just just... All you got to do really is look at yourself and see how difficult it is to deal with you and then start thinking about that person dealing with you. Sometimes you just got to just stay still. Yeah. You know, just stay still because when these situations arise, they will arise. I don't care if you're single or married. Yeah. They will arise. But how beautiful it is to go through situations and through life with somebody that you love. Yeah. Right? Uh Versus... I'm going to get busy tonight versus uh, I got to lay hands on tonight now, versus you going through it by yourself. You know, I hear guys, I hear some of my friends all the time, male friends, you know, I can't find a good wife. You know, I hear women all the time. I can't find a good husband. Mm-hmm. Right. They will find you. Yeah. When you stop looking you for them, you just start living your life for Christ. He'll put them in your path because as our story go, I'm at a funeral and going to Bible study up there in Salem, minding my business, crying. This one looked at me and just like, who is that? I'm like, who is that? I'm crying. I mean, but you know, God will put that person in your yeah. path to yeah. make it work. Yeah. Yeah. You didn't know you had a friend. demon on my shoulder, shoulder said, run away, run away. <laughs> <laughs> well, you no, can. No, no. I, I put not, a spell I, on I, you. I, I, <laughs> knocked, oh, I yes. knocked them off. But, hey, Ted, Rena, talk a little bit about this. Because we've got some couples out there that are listening that are really struggling in their marriage right now. Let's let's talk about some of those struggles and how you handle it. So talk a little bit about how to handle struggles within your marriage. Because a lot of people just, you know, you talk to the wrong person, they say the wrong things. Mm-hmm. What should we do when we're when when our husband is not paying that much attention to us or our wife is not, you know, uh, providing, you know, some of the things that we want from her? How do you how do you counsel those couples when they go through situations like that? You know, I'm going to take this one, Ted, first. Um, a lot of times, first of all, women need a lot of attention. Just Ooh. put that out there. Yes, they do. Women need a lot of attention that you need to show them daily. Hey, you know, baby, you look good to me. Um, I got you. Pay attention to what they're saying. Because, you know, a lot of guys be like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. 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 If she got to stand in front of the TV in order to get your attention, you problem. ain't doing your job. That's right. Work. That's a problem. You know what, Ted, you're right. We have a lot of words because we got a lot of things to deal with. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you being our best friend, that's who we want to share it with. Because you'll find a lot of women will not say what's really going on. They want to tell you. They want to tell you because women, when they put their makeup on, put their clothes on, they made up. Mm -hmm. Nobody's going to know there's an issue. Mm -hmm. But my best friend. My my boo, uh-huh. my roommate, uh-huh. my baby daddy, uh-huh. my uh-huh. husband uh-huh. need to know all about what's going on yeah. with me. Yeah. Yep. Because that's who I want to tell it to, and that's who I want to tell me the truth about what's going on. Because my <laughs> so far so called girlfriend might say, "Girl, you know, you all right, girl? That, that's okay. Oh, girl, blah blah blah." blah. But you want that real stuff yeah. from your man. That's why you got. We have a hundred words. Uh-huh. And. If you two can't work it out, can't nobody else come in and tell you how to work your thing out? So can't. Can't uh-huh. nobody else do it. Only so, one that can guide is God, and that's it. And that's yeah. it. And when mm-hmm. once you take it to your husband and God, it should become some type of workout situation. Yep. Yeah. And if your husband don't want to give you that attention, Lord, please don't let somebody else walk in there and give it to her. Because Thank once she's gone, she gone. Mm-hmm. Ooh. You're right. Once she gone, she gone. That's she ain't cold. coming back. Who's that's, making that's love to your old lady while you are out making hey, love? I got this one here. <laughs> Cheating in the next room. Uh-uh. <laughs> <laughs> There you go, there you go. That was at the Sin Hotel. Yeah. So, Terry, what, what would you guys say about that? Rick, I, I think we have... There we go. Oh! oh. Hey. There you go, Deanna, there you go. All right. Be on point. Boom, ba-doom, boom. 
I was going to say, first of all, you have to come to the table. You have to be able to come and sit down and communicate at the table, yeah. right? Oh. And the, the hardest part in a marriage to me is listening. Who's listening? Mm-hmm. You know, you can have someone talking all the time, uh-huh. but who's willing to listen, right? Yeah. So you have to sit down at the table and communicate that thing out. Now, I also believe that you need to find yourself a power couple, right? Yeah. A couple that is in Christ, a couple yeah. that's more mature, uh-huh. a couple that will tell you how it is. When yeah. you guys cannot come to an agreement, mm-hmm. you should have one or two Christian couples. Uh-huh. Amen. Uh-huh. Yeah. That can steer you in the right direction, right? Don't be afraid, men. Do not be afraid of going to a counseling session. Amen. Say that again. Men, do (laughs) not be afraid to go to a counseling Uh session. I'm telling you, they work wonders. We've been to several. Uh But you know what? You need to get those additional opinions and uh, expertise from people who are solid. Uh Not someone that is single, not with your girlfriend. Right. Not one of your homies. Go to a Christian couple for some serious conversation. And I'm glad, I'm glad you said that because you you know a lot of times people you know want to talk to people uh, that are just married, mm-hmm. but you want to have that power Christian couple uh-huh. that will you know because sometimes you know what you want what you want from a Christian couple is honesty. Right. Absolutely. What you might get from somebody else is their opinion. Right. 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 And, and when you go to a, 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 a Christian couple that has the foundation of a, of a uh, covenant biblical relationship, yes. they're going to give you honesty. They're going to give you truth. They're going to tell you about trials and tribulations. Right. I don't want to know your opinion. <clears throat> right. Absolutely. You know, I, I want to know what you went through and how you can help me and, and talk to me about how I can get out of it. Exactly. Because if you can't do that, then you're not really helping me. And so, you know, when I give my opinion, well, this is what I think you should do. No, oh. I don't want to hear what you <laughs> right. think I should do. I want you to tell me from a biblical standpoint what God requires from me in this relationship oh. and what I should do because I'm in a covenant relationship with my spouse. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And when you get that, and, and, I, and I will say that, you know, as far as I know, you know, and again, I'll say because I was at Salem before and, you know, still have much love for him. That was something that was taught. Yes, I'm absolutely. sure that there are other churches that are doing that as well. But you need to, you know, to be able to search the scriptures and feel that that person is giving you the right, right. information. When they start straying from the scriptures, it's time for you to stray from them. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes, I agree 100 percent with that. Um, yeah. Like Chess said, we have been to, um, to counseling and we did find someone older than us mm-hmm. that have been through some things that um, we were going through. Mm-hmm. Um, and be and be careful when somebody tells you, oh, uh, uh, well, we ain't done that, I did that. Because uh-huh. as long as you marry, things are going to come up. Uh-huh. And you need somebody, like Rick said, that's going to tell you the truth, that it's honest, and that's going to stay within the scripture, uh-huh. that can guide you through some stuff. Uh-huh. Keep them people close and dear. Yeah, uh-huh. You know what I mean? Because as long as you marry, things are going to come up, things are going to happen. Uh-huh. And God knows we've had some good times. You know what I'm saying? I've good had times. some good days. <laughs> I've Big had baby. some heels to climb. There you go. There you go. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. How do you guys keep, you know, I'm going to switch gears real quick here. How do you guys keep that spark alive? Because every time we see you guys, I remember when I talked to you guys, I said, I love being around you guys. You're oh, real. You always oh, stay happy. Oh. You're a fun couple. How do you Thank keep that you. spark going in your marriage after 23 years? Ooh, Look at her, Brenda. Look at her. <laughs> but I, you know, I said she beautiful, but I can't see what you, you see, are brother. So well, beautiful. The nice thing about my wife, I can say, is that she has a great sense of humor. Right? That sense of humor keeps me laughing. Uh, we have a, a long, a long history together, so we know some inside personal things that just make us tickle on the inside, and so we know how to bring those things up, right? We know how to bring those great memories up, uh-huh. and we know how to uh, hold each other up also when we're having some issues as well. So I think that's one of the things. Baby. Yes, baby. I think Brenda talking about something else. <laughs> yeah. I, I think she talking about how you keep the fire uh-huh. 
See, Rena's there Burning. with me. But you know, I let Chad say the sweet stuff. Yeah, you know, I'm about to say fire. the sweet stuff. <laughs> say the sweet stuff, and he gonna get some of the fire stuff. Yeah. Right, because yeah. he's been talking about it all night. It's gonna right, be a right. good night. Oh right, my right, God. Right, 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 right. right. <laughs> and, and that's pretty much how he get it started. Right. You know what I'm saying? Because it starts way before you get to the bedroom. That's, that's what right. I'm saying. We can say it because we're grown and we remember. Oh. That's that foreplay. Go yes. ahead. Yes. Yes. <laughs> And, it is. And, and, yes. and I just want to go to number four. <laughs> <laughs> Can we just go to four? <laughs> How many licks does it take? Four. <laughs> <laughs> it just takes four. I want to go to four. <laughs> go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> Okay. We married in here. Yeah. We married. It is hard okay. enough. So you're talking about the intimacy. intimacy. The intimacy. Yes. Okay. Absolutely. Uh, I was with you, Brenda. I was with you. I was like, what are you talking about? I thought she was talking about the same. See, me and I was with you. Oh, oh no. There you go. Mm, 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 but, go ahead. Go ahead, mm, Rena. Go ahead, Rena. I mean, she said all of that. That's what it be That's what it is. You know, it starts way before you get to the bedroom, and it's like the phone calls before you get home. Mm-hmm. You know, you start setting the mood yes. way before the mood get going. Yes, yeah. And, and you have to keep up those little flowers. Mm-hmm. You had to keep this. I'm gonna put it out here. The same thing you did to get her. Yeah. You got to do it to keep her. Amen. Don't get relaxed because women like again a lot of attention, mm-hmm. and they still like to be dated. Because you married, don't mean the dating stuff is over. Amen. You know what I mean? Keep your little dates going. You know, uh, um, go ahead and put them red pumps on the bed. Get a little <laughs> she got those red pumps on. Come here. She got the red pumps on. She got the red pumps yes, on. Baby. It's getting hot in here. Yeah. The red shoe diaries. Remember that, y'all? Right. With the red nail uh-huh. polish. Uh-huh. Check out the red uh-huh. nail yeah. polish. Okay. And lipstick. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you got to let no hey, I still got some stuff going on uh-huh. here. Yeah. That's what Chad said. Look at her, Brenda. I'm like, I can't see her the yeah. way you see her. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. That's all right. Absolutely. <laughs> and women have to do the same thing. You know, mm-hmm. men still like to be adored. Yes, mm-hmm. they do. You know. They leave their ego stroke every yeah. now and then. Oh my God. Yeah. Every, oh. Every, oh. Every, <laughs> <laughs> just say phone. Just say phone. <laughs> Now, and, and just to clarify, y'all remember the commercial, how many licks does it take to get to a right, center right, of a tissue right, right. That's what I was talking about. Y'all, uh-huh. y'all other minds, y'all thinking something okay. else. I was with you. Man. Okay, thank you, you, thank you. I was with you. But, uh, hey, you know what? We, uh, we, we appreciate you guys coming in. We're going to uh, go on to You guys going to stay here with us because we got to do relationship yeah. letters so you can talk about that with us as well. <laughs> Uh, this is uh, Ted and Renna from uh, Salem Baptist Church and Salem Baptist Church Ministry. They've been married for 23 years. They were yeah. talking about uh, being married and talking about being married forever, for a lifetime. And that's uh-huh. what we want you to believe in. Get a power couple like Ted and Renna to uh-huh. talk to about being strong and committed in your relationship. And what you should always do. From day one of you getting married, you've got to believe that that marriage is going to last forever. Yeah. Because if Christ is in that relationship, he's going to be there forever. Oh, yeah. You should commit to that relationship forever, too. That's right. So Absolutely. what we got going next, baby? Right now, coming up next, we have Leave It in the Car. All right, we're going to have Leave It in the Car. We can have a sponsor. Uh, EV-